In this week's Weekly Funny Jokes, we bring you our best joke compilation of the week. These jokes are sure to make you laugh from the first one to the last one. This week we bring you five jokes, starting with a joke about a ring, until we end with a Godfather joke. So sit back, get the popcorn, and be ready to laugh until your stomach ache. Here is a great story joke about love, intrigue, and the value of a ring. First, a bit of a history lesson. Forget papyrus scrolls and hemp rings. We've come a long way since ancient Egypt, where love was measured in leather and ivory. Now it's all about sparkly rocks and empty bank accounts. But hey, progress, right? So, before I get lost in a time warp, reminiscing reeds and net worth. Let me tell you about this ring. Did you know the first wedding ring dates back to 3,000 years ago? The first recorded evidence of a formal exchange of rings between two people was found in ancient Egypt. Writings, better known as papyrus scrolls, featured couples exchanging rings made of hemp or reeds. These rings generally didn't last long and were replaced by either leather or ivory. The more expensive the material, the more love was shown to the person receiving the ring. In addition, the type of material also represented the net worth of the giver. Documented evidence showed that these rings symbolized everlasting love and commitment between two people. The circle of the ring represented no beginning and no end. The inside of the ring symbolized the future, which still applies to the symbol of rings today. Buckle up, history buffs and hopeless romantics. We've journeyed from papyrus scrolls to credit card bills, all in the name of love. This joke, unlike those ancient hemp rings, prepare you to have your funny bone mummified with laughter as we unveil a gem of a joke, an older, silver foxed hair man walked into a jewelry store one Friday evening with a beautiful young woman at his side. He told the jeweler that he was looking for a ring so extraordinary it'll make pigeons jealous of its sparkle. For his girlfriend, the jeweler looked through his stock and brought out a $10,000 ring and showed him. His smile crinkled around the edges, eyes twinkling with mischievous intent. I'm afraid you haven't met a special request yet. At that statement, the jeweler went to his special stock and brought another ring over. Here is a stunning ring at only $40,000, the jeweler said. Her excitement crackled like popcorn in a microwave, threatening to explode in a shower of happy squeals. The old man seeing this said, we'll take it. The man patted his pockets dramatically. Oh, I seem to have misplaced my solid gold credit card today. But fret not. A humble knight always carries his trusty checkbook. I know you need to make sure my check is good. So I'll write it now, and you can call the bank Monday to verify the funds. And I'll pick the ring up Monday afternoon, the old man said. The Monday the jeweler called the old man. Sir, your check bounced higher than a yo-yo champion on Red Bull. Unfortunately, it didn't land back in my hand. I know, said the old man. But can you imagine the lovely weekend I just had? <laughs> in this greatest jokes ever, we delve into an old question. Wives versus girlfriends? But when the joke is done, just wait for the moral of the story. Might just save your life. Ever wondered the difference between a wife and a girlfriend? Don't ask me. My Google search history is just, do you also get lonely? But hey, maybe my grandpa knows. He's been married for 40 years. 
which basically qualifies him as an expert on technology outages disguised as human relationships. So, before we dive into the ancient texts of marriage manuals, let's rewind to the simpler times, back when the most advanced gadget was a toaster and technology came unplanned just like some people, the development of the telephone. While Italian innovator Antonio Mucci is credited with inventing the first basic phone in 1849, and Frenchman Charles Boursoul devised a phone in 1854, Alexander Graham Bell won the first U.S. patent for the device in 1876. The smartphone industry has been steadily developing and growing since 2008, both in market size and in number of models and vendors. Smartphone shipments worldwide added up to around 1.2 billion units in 2022, declining from 2021. By the end of 2022, 68% of the world's population were smartphone users. Electronic television was first successfully demonstrated in San Francisco on Scepter 7, 1927. The system was designed by Philo Taylor Farnsworth, who had been working on it since 1920. Telstar, the first commercial communication satellite, was launched in 1962. Now, when it comes to main telephone events, the first transcontinental telephone line is established in 1913. The first cross-country radio telephone service is established in 1933. So yeah, from rotary phones to self-driving cars, humanity's come a long way. Now, buckle up for a journey even more mind-blowing. How the hell do TVs and telephones connect your girlfriend and your wife? Trust me. It's not about playing Candy Crush. Get ready for a punchline so unexpected, it'll make dial-up sound futuristic. So, this boy and his grandfather were sitting on the porch having a chat when the boy got a very serious smirk on his face. Grandpa looked like he'd swallowed a lemon. So I popped him the age-old question, wives versus girlfriends, what's the deal? He scratched his beard gears grinding, squinted at him like he was tuning in an old rabbit ears channel. Well, it will take some explaining, my boy, but let's do it by making some modern day comparisons. Son, he rasped, wives are like a 52 inch TV. Girlfriends are like sleek smartphone you sneak a glance at under the table. TV is big bulky and most of the time old, while the mobile is cute slim shaped like a sand dune, new, but more replaceable. At home, you watch TV, but when you go out, you take your mobile, cannot do without it. So, TV at home, girlfriend away from home. You only still enjoy your television when something good is happening, like when a pig fly and land safely, but you enjoy your smartphone so much, you are willing to play with it most of the time. TVs tend to be with you for many years, but mobile phones, you change every other year. You friends are not interested if you get a new television, but they do take notice of you have a new smartphone. TV is normally good and free for life, but the moment you don't pay for your mobile, the services will be terminated. When you go to do shopping for real men, like the fishing tackle shop, don't see anyone taking their TV along but the mobile, always tag along. Now don't even get me started on cost. No comparison. The phone is like a bottomless pit for your wallet. Data plans, cracked screens, new charger every other week. It's crazy. TV is one-way communication. Watch and listen. With your mobile phone, you can talk, have an opinion, and be listened to. So, which is best, Grandpa? The boy asked. Now that's a totally different equation, the Grandpa responded. TV, cheaper on cost. TV, switch it off when you want to. You switch your mobile off, and everyone wants to know what's wrong. When you get much older like me, the Grandpa said, I can still see the TV and still understand the remote. 
but have no interest anymore in the new smart devices. When the kids come to visit, we can all still have a bit of family time enjoying the TV. But the mobile phones are not so much for family entertainment anymore. When your time come to spend your last days in hospital, you will probably still have a TV to watch from your bed. You will be searching for programs on what's on the other side, but there will be no more interest or usage for your mobile phone. So spend more time with your TV as it is still the glue to the family and less time with your phone and you will have a happy ending. <laughs> Moral of the story is this. If wife versus girlfriend was a marathon, then the wife would be those comfortable shoes that make the running easier. The girlfriend will be the water you get at the water point. Looks great as you are getting close. Can't wait to take a sip. But that water bottle might just be filled with vinegar. Today, we tell you a funny story joke about a priest and arthritis. But first, a quick bit of history of arthritis. Did you know that the first reference to arthritis is found in texts? That goes back to 4500 BC. Yes, more than 6500 years ago. An actual text dated 123 AD first describes symptoms that appear to be similar to rheumatoid arthritis. The details were noted among skeletal remains of Native Americans found in Tennessee. Now that we have that out of the way, buckle up for this fascinating joke. A man who reeked of beer sat down on a subway seat next to a priest. The man's suit resembled a war zone map, complete with mustard gas yellow stains and lipstick trench lines. His face looked like a toddler had applied makeup with a potato and a rum bottle peeked out of his pocket, like a pirate's buried treasure. Yet, amidst the sartorial chaos, he sat reading the newspaper with the focus of a sponge, absorbing every drop of detail. The subway clock, tired of watching paint dry, finally coughed up five minutes. The man turned to the priest and asked, Say, Father, what causes arthritis? The priest was obviously not very impressed with this man and said, Mister, it's caused by loose living. With woman so cheap, they practically pays you to buy it, drowning your liver in alcohol and a contempt for your fellow man. Huh, who knew? The drunk man muttered, returning to his paper. The priest blushed and tapped the man's shoulder. Forgive my outburst, sir. I'm usually better at dispensing blessings than diagnoses. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to come on so strong. How long have you had arteritis? I don't have it, Father. I was just reading here that the Pope does. <laughs> the moral of the story is this. The priest learned a valuable lesson that day. Don't throw shade when you're wearing holy water sandals. Luckily, a little red wine on the cheek and a heartfelt apology. And maybe a donation to the room fund smoothed things over. Remember, everyone makes mistakes, even those who dispense of blessings for a living. And well, turns out this rum-soaked pirate with a wardrobe straight out of a clown convention might just be the Dalai Lama's long-lost cousin. Appearances can be deceiving, unless they involve a parrot on your shoulder and an eye patch made of cheese. <laughs> In today's greatest movie joke on YouTube, we will show you that books are like reading brochures for the past, all dry facts and no adventure. Spielberg, on the other hand, throws you headfirst into the action 
Imagine chilling with dinosaurs, dodging Nazi bullets, or maybe even surviving an alien invasion. Well, there you have it. Today is all about Steven Spielberg, the producer and director of the following top movies, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Jaws, Indiana Jones franchise, Saving Private Ryan and Jurassic Park, to name but a few. Attention joke enthusiasts, strap yourselves in, for you are about to embark on a comedy roller coaster, wilder than E.T. escaping on a BMX bike. Hold on to your sides, because this joke is funnier than a velociraptor wearing roller skates. But seriously, buckle up, buttercup. This one's going to sting like a T-Rex toothache, in the best way possible. So one day, a Chinese gentleman walked into a bar and ordered a drink. His socks was officially knocked of, wait a damn minute, that's Steven Spielberg sitting at the bar, trying to act casual next to Spielberg, sweating more than a T-Rex in a sauna. After the last sip, he felt the producer's glare bore into him like a judgmental hangover, the morning after a liquor sunrise. The next moment, he hit the floor like a dropped Oscar, after being hit by Will Smith, only less prestigious and a lot more painful. What the hell? I mean the deepest respect for your legendary right hook. It was the legendary director that have hit the Chinese gentleman. But seriously, ouch! The Chinese gentleman screamed like a banshee on a sugar rush. The director ranted, that's for the bombing of Pearl Harbor. My father perished in that bombing, you stupid Jap. But I'm not Japanese. I'm from China. Bless your cotton socks, you're off by a mile. Yay, the director said. Japanese, Burmese, Chinese, you guys are all the same. With that, the director continues with his drink. Calming down like a toddler after finding their lost gummy bear, the Chinese man took his seat again and ordered a double from the barman. He down it like he's been through the desert on a horse with no name. A few seconds later, he turned around and delivered a mighty punch to the director. That's for sinking the Titanic. I had ancestors on that ship, he shouted. You're ignorant chink, said the director. The Titanic was sunk by an iceberg. The Chinese gentleman replied, Iceberg, Carlsberg, Spielberg, you are all the bloody same. <laughs>
as they are as close to legal criminals as one can get. Our lawyer could speak sign language as to ensure the godfather have a means to communicate with his deaf accountant. One day, the godfather noticed that $10 million were missing from his bank account. As this transaction could only have gone into the hands of his accountant, the godfather turned to the lawyer said, let's go pay the money man a visit. Today, he will be singing opera with the fishes. When they got to the accountant's house, he was obviously very nervous, as he knew that this godfather has killed many people before for much smaller offenses. The godfather took out his gun, looking like a shark sizing up a minnow. He pointed at the accountant and said to the lawyer, ask this numbers guy to sing a song of about 10 million bucks. The lawyer said to the accountant in sign language, the godfather wants to know where his $10 million is, or else you will be pushing up daisies. The accountant knew that his gig was up, and the only chance to survive was to come clean. So he answered the lawyer back in sign language, I promise you all the money is still safe. It is in a brown suitcase buried behind my house, underneath the oak tree. The godfather turned to the lawyer and said, so what did the choir boy say? Spill it before I rearrange his vocal cords. At this moment, the gears in the lawyer's head started working overtime. The lawyer dropped his arms next to his body, as if very disappointed, and spoke. Dear Godfather, he said this pig does not have the guts to shoot me. <laughs> the moral of the story is this. If you must choose two things in life that you can never trust, chances are great that one of them will always be a lawyer. If you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.